Welcome back to LSAT Games. We're going to do another LSAT logic puzzle today. And we're looking at a specific kind of game called an in and out game. I'm answering a question that I actually saw on the LSAT Discord server. How do we approach in and out games where we don't know the sizes of the groups? One quick announcement before I get into the game. This will actually be the last video I do on this channel, last for a while anyway, of LSAT Games. I am moving that off to its own channel, Polymathematic LSAT. It should be linked in like the connected channels or something and I'm sure I'll put a link in the description. But when I post new games from now on, it will be on that other channel. So if you have been following along for LSAT games, please subscribe to the Polymathematic LSAT channel. Please don't unsubscribe from the Polymathematic channel. I know that you love seeing the math videos too, but if you are here for LSAT, make sure you move over to that other channel. Back to our game. This is the second game from Prep Test 33, and it's one of my absolute favorite examples of in and out games especially in and out games where we don't know the sizes of the groups. An in and out game, of course, is just a special kind of grouping game where we have only two groups. In this case, we're going to be looking at birds that are either in a forest or not in a forest. But pretty much any game with just two groups work that same way. We're at clinic A or clinic B. We're scheduling classes in the fall or we're scheduling classes in the spring. We're looking at, I don't know, cars on a used car dealer car lot and cars not on a used car dealer car lot. Although we would always prefer to know the sizes of our groups in a grouping game, an in and out game is the best kind of grouping game to not know the sizes of the groups. Because for the most part, every element, regardless of the number of elements in a particular group, must end up in one of those two groups. But let's go ahead and jump into this one to see if there are any nuances to how we want to approach it. Questions 6 through 12. Prep Test 33, Game 2, here we go. Bird watchers explore a forest to see which of the following six kinds of birds. And we get our list of elements right away. G, H, J, M, S, and W. It contains. The findings are consistent with the following conditions. Okay, classic in and out setup. We're either in the forest or we are out of the forest. So let's set up our diagram with an inside and an outside. Also pretty distinctive of in and out games, as I quickly scan down the clues, I can see that they are entirely conditional statements. In and out games usually have all or almost all conditional statements as clues. Let's go ahead and symbolize these. If harriers are in the forest, then gross beaks are not. So if H is in, G is out. And again, we always want to come up with our contrapositives right away. That is, we can't conclude something like, wait, if we see G out, doesn't that mean H is in? No, that would be what's called the converse. And just like saying, if someone's born in Texas, that must mean they're born in Dallas is not necessarily true. The converse of a conditional statement is not necessarily true. Again, if we said, oh, well, H is not in, that must mean that G is, right? No, that would be like saying, if you're not born in Dallas, then that must mean you're not born in Texas. That's not necessarily true either. That's called the inverse of the statement. The only thing we can say for sure is true is the contrapositive. If we both flip the conditional statement around and negate both sides. So the opposite of G being out is G being in. That's going to go on the front of our conditional statement now. And the opposite of H being in is H being out. If we see G in, for sure we know that H is out. Moving on to the next one, if Jays, Martins, or both are in the forest, then so are Harriers. Okay, I've done another video on this. I guess I'll put a card somewhere in the corner here. When can we split up conditional statements? That is, when we see something like an or or an and, when is it okay to split that conditional statement into multiple conditional statements, and when do we need to actually keep it all paired together? With or on the if side of our conditional statement, we can separate this out. Jays actually have nothing to do with Martins here. The or here is telling us if we see J's on the inside, regardless of what's happening with M, Harriers definitely have to be in. And similarly, if we see M on the inside, regardless of what's going on with J, H also has to be in. Our contrapositives there, of course, would be if H is not in, J is not in, and if H is not in, M is not in. Now, one thing you want to resist the temptation to do right now is to start to pair a bunch of these conditional statements together to say, oh, wow, if G is in, H is out, H is out, J is out. So I should write down a whole new clue here. If G is in, J is out, and then it's contrapositive if J is in, G is out. That's certainly true, but in this particular case, we've got four different conditional clues, 
and there could end up being dozens of these kind of domino train deductions. What's more, any scenario where we put G on the inside and then H on the outside, we will naturally follow up by putting J on the outside because of the HJ clue. We don't need a separate deduction connecting G to J, it's just gonna happen naturally as we work out the scenario. So for now, let's ignore those kinds of domino deductions, and we're gonna look for just one other kind of deduction after we finish symbolizing our clues. We're on the third clue here. If wrens are in the forest, so are grosbeaks. So if wrens are in, G is in, and then of course the contrapositive. If G is out, W is out. And then finally, last clue here. If J's are not in the forest, shrikes are. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I am not a bird expert. And the contrapositive, of course, would be if shrikes are not in the forest, J's are. Now, like I said, you don't want to spend time looking for those kind of domino train deductions, but you do want to spend time looking for what I call coin flips. Coin flips on an in and out game are conditional statements that begin one way and end the opposite way. That is, they begin positive, like H and G are in the forest, and then they end negative, H and G are out. Or this other one, J is not in the forest, S is in the forest. That one begins negative and ends up positive. These kinds of coin flip deductions are important because they tell us for sure where one of the elements, at least one of the elements, must go. In other words, consider something like the HG clue. If I see H on the inside, for sure I have to put G on the outside. And of course, if I see G on the inside, for sure I have to put H on the outside. Meaning there's no way that I can put both of them on the inside at the same time. They could both go on the outside, but for sure at least one of them must be on the outside. So I'm gonna set up this little coin flip, and again, it does not mean only one of H or G is on the outside. In fact, maybe I even wanna put a little plus sign here to remind myself of this, at least one of H or G is on the outside. Basically, wherever the statements end up, on the inside or the outside, that's where the placeholder goes. Similarly, for our SJ clue, it ends positively, and so the little coin flip is gonna go on the inside here. At least one of S or J for sure must be on the inside of the game, though again, it could actually be both of them. With those kinds of coin flip deductions taken care of, we're ready to jump into the questions. Again, I don't want to try and string together a bunch of different conditional clues. I do want to look for, of course, a pick a clue style question, and number six is one of these. Which one of the following could be a complete and accurate list of the birds not in the forest? Now, normally on a pick a clue style question, we want to see a complete list of the elements, but on an in and out game, it's pretty common to see just one half of the game. In this case, we're given the outside, and so it may be useful to keep track of what's on the inside as well. For example, answer choice A, if jays and shrikes are the birds that are on the outside of the forest, and that's a complete and accurate list of the birds on the outside of the forest, everything else, G, M, W, and H, would have to be on the inside of the game. But right away we can tell that's not possible. G and H are not supposed to be on the inside of the game together at the same time. One of them has to be out. And so we can go ahead and cross off answer choice A, and for that matter, answer choice E makes the same mistake. One of H or G has to be on the outside of the game. From there though, we'll just go through the rest of the clues. If Jays, Martins, or both are in the forest, then so are Harriers. And again, our contrapositive there was that if Harriers are out, both Jays and Martins have to be out. So B is no good because it has Harriers out, but does not have Jays or Martins out. Neither C nor D have Harriers though, so we can move on. Third clue says if Wrens are in, so are Grosbeaks. And again, by contrapositive, that means that if Grosbeaks are out, Wrens are out. But answer choice C has the Grosbeaks out, but does not have the wrens out, so C is no good. A process of elimination, only answer choice D can work here. We can go ahead and move into the specific questions. Number seven begins with if, if both Martins and Harriers are in the forest, which one of the following statements must be true? So this is a must be true question. And now's where I wanna just follow my conditional statements. For example, if H is in, we know G is out. And if G is out, we know W is out. If M is in, H is in, but of course we already have H on the inside. The only other two elements right now are J or S, and of course I wanna keep in mind this little coin flip tells me at least one of them is in, maybe both, but for sure one of them has to be in. I think that's all we can figure out for sure, so let's go to the answer choices. A, shrikes are the only other birds in the forest? Well, no, not necessarily, because it could be J. B, jays are the only other birds in the forest? No, not necessarily, because it could be S. It's tempting now to select C, the forest contains neither jays nor shrikes, 
but actually we know that can't be true. One of them has to be in, we just don't know which one for sure. So C is not a must be true either. D, there are at least two other kinds of birds in the forest. Well, again, I know I could have two other kinds, but I don't have to have at least two other kinds. Instead, I have to have at most two other kinds. Answer choice E is the best choice here. Let's move on to number eight, our next specific question. If J's are not in the forest, which one of the following must be false? Well, if J's are not in, then for sure, Shrike's are. That's that JS placeholder at work there. If S is in, do we know something else? No. If J is out, do we know something else? It's tempting to go to H, but again, just because J is out, that doesn't necessarily mean that H is out. I don't know anything else. I don't see anything else that has to go somewhere. Now, this was a must be false. Let's see. A, Martins are in the forest. No, that seems like it could be true. Anything that could be true, we're going to eliminate here. B, Harriers are in the forest. Again, it's tempting to say that can't happen because of the conditional statement, but I can't go backwards on the arrow, so no, that's totally possible. C, neither Martins nor Harriers are in the forest. Again, if I've crossed off A and B, maybe I'm tempted now to say that C has to be false, but I don't have to have them, I just could have them. So C is not a must be false. D, neither Martins nor Shrikes are in the forest. Well, there it is. We know Shrikes have to be in the forest, so it must be false to say that Shrikes are out of the forest. Number eight is D. Let's move on to the next specific question. Number 11, if Grosbeaks are in, which one of the following must be true? Well, if G is in, ooh, I was about to say if G is in, W has to be in, but that's not what this clue says. If W is in, G is in, but not necessarily the other way around. We can say for sure though, H is out, and when H is out, both J and M also have to be out. Of course, when J is out, S is in. And so the only thing we don't know about right now are the wrens. But again, they could be either in or out based on the clues. As far as what must be true, shrikes are in the forest. Yes, 11 is A. Very simple. All right, next question, number 12. Now, specific questions begin with both if and suppose. And the key is that they're adding information to the game. So notice number 12, suppose the condition is added. So they're giving us an additional rule here, but they're not invalidating any of the rules that are here already. So this is a specific question we can do next. It might be a little tougher than other specific questions. I mean, just looking at it, you can see it's a little bit longer, but as long as it's not invalidating a rule, we don't really need to treat it like one of those weird complex questions that we're gonna save for the end. Suppose the condition is added that if shrikes are in the forest, harriers are not, which for us, we can also say by contrapositive, if harriers are in the forest, shrikes are not. If all other conditions remain in effect, which one of the following could be true? So unfortunately, they're not giving us something we can put right in the diagram, so I'm just gonna have to try out some answer choices instead. And the main thing I wanna remember is I do have this new clue to make sure any scenario they tell me about works with as well. A, the forest contains both J's and shrikes. Well, that definitely used to be possible, but right now, if J's are in, H is also in, and with my new clue, this scenario is not okay. When H is in, S is supposed to be out. When S is in, H is supposed to be out. So actually, that does not work. I can go ahead and cross off answer choice A. B, the forest contains both wrens and shrikes. Well, my new rule says if shrikes are in, H is out. H is out, J is out. If H is out, M is out. And of course, if wrens are in, gross beaks are in. So that's all six elements. Does that violate the new conditional clue? No, so that seems totally possible. So number 12 must be B. So let's move on to our general questions. Number nine, which one of the following is the maximum number of the six kinds of birds the forest could contain? So let's address the elephant in the room, or I guess the bird in the forest maximum and minimum number questions. On an in and out game where we don't know the sizes of the groups, which is what's been happening so far. Sometimes we've had up to four birds in the forest, sometimes only a couple, maybe two, maybe three. The fact that we haven't known exactly how many birds are in or out of the forest doesn't really seem to have affected much so far. But on an in and out game where we don't know the sizes of the groups, maximum and minimum number questions are very common. For the most part though, we just wanna treat these like other general questions. We're gonna use our deductions, we're gonna use our previous specific instances and see what we can eliminate before we actually have to start trying out answers. 
Like in this case, if I'm looking for the maximum number. Well, again, for sure I've already seen three, so I can go ahead and cross off A. There's no way that two is the maximum. But also up here on number seven, remember that JS clue says at least one of J or S is in. It could have been both of them. So I could easily see four birds in the forest. The question I have is, can I get any more than four? And for this, I'm actually gonna look to the outside. We've always had two or three birds on the outside of the forest. The only exception to that was number eight when J was on the outside. So what happens there if J is on the outside? Can we put everything else in? G, W, H, and M. And of course the answer is no, because there's no way to have both G or H on the inside at the same time. In fact, really, we didn't write this down, but we should have brought our deduction down. One other thing we did know on number eight is at least one of G or H was on that outside. So there's no way to get six birds in. And for that matter, I'm not seeing any way to get five birds in either. This one must be answer choice C. Finally, last question, number 10, which one of the following pairs of birds cannot be among those birds contained in the forest? A, Jays and Wrens. Uh, I've never seen it, but is there some reason it's impossible? I'm gonna go ahead and keep it for now and just see what else we can eliminate. Jays and shrikes, no. For sure those can be in at the same time. We've seen that possibility on number seven. Shrikes and wrens, we saw that on number 12, cross off C. Jays or martins, we saw that on seven, cross off D. Shrikes or martins, we saw that on seven, cross off E. And so by process of elimination, number 10 has to be A. This is a great example, again, of how we do not need to do the domino train deductions. If we do the domino train deductions, we realize, oh, when you put J in, you have to put H in. When you put H in, you have to put G out. When you put G out, you have to put W out. But again, that would be three separate deductions we're coming up with, plus their contrapositives, plus any other connections I haven't already made, all for one general question where we could just check our previous scenarios anyway. It's a waste of time to do those domino train deductions. And that's that. I am pretty confident, you can look it up and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty confident we have gotten all seven of those questions correct. That is how I would approach an in and out game where you do not know the sizes of the groups and more generally, of course, how you approach in and out games with all their conditional clues. I hope that's been helpful. Like the video, subscribe to the new channel, Polymathematic LSAT. That will be where I post my next game. I will link that down in the description below and otherwise I'll see y'all next time.